And as we do each year, a framed copy of the proclamation will be presented to a D-Day veteran as a symbol of a grateful city. This year, we will be joined by Rifleman John Hadley. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Francis. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to recognize a few of my colleagues that have joined us today. Councillor Josh Cole, Councillor Sarah Doucette, Councillor James Pasternak, Councillor Michael Thompson, Councillor Giorgio Mammoliti, Councillor Doug Ford, Councillor Paul Ainsley, Councillor Mark Grimes, Councillor David Shiner, Councillor Norm Kelly, and Councillor Mary Fragadakis. Thank you for joining us to commemorate the 68th anniversary of D-Day. I want to recognize the distinguished veterans joining us today. Their heroic and selfless acts are why we come together on this day every year. I'm honored to be in the presence of our veterans, a group we must all hold in the highest regard. I would now like to invite Mr. Hadley to join me as I read the D-Day Proclamation. Toronto remembers D-Day, June 6, 2012. Whereas 68 years ago today, the Allied invasion of Normandy was a daring and remarkable military feat that marked a turning point in the course of the Second World War. On June 6, 1944, hundreds of thousands of men and women took part in what became the largest military invasion in history and the success of the Operation Overlord led to the liberation of occupied Europe and the eventual defeat of Nazi Germany. We are tremendously proud that Canadians made up one-third of the combined air, naval and ground forces that took part in the evasion. Units of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division and the 4th Canadian Armoured Brigade were among those who stormed ashore at Juneau Beach that faithful morning. Canadian paratroopers were among the first to land in France in the early hours and over 50 ships of the Royal Canadian Navy, including HMCS Haida and 37 squadrons of the Royal Canadian Air Force took part. We pay tribute to the D-Day veterans and all Canadians who served overseas and on the home front during the Second World War and remember their courage and their sacrifices they made for all of us. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Rob Ford, on behalf of Toronto City Council, do hereby proclaim June 6, 2012, as Toronto remembers D-Day to mark the 68th anniversary in honour of the men and women who fought for the peace and freedom that we enjoy today. Thank you so much. Day in 1944, I was in the proud company of some very brave young Canadians. We took the beach and established the beachhead, and we reached our objective, which was 10 miles inland, and we paid a heavy price. When the roll was called that evening, we had one NCO left, the Sergeant Frank Gaines, and one lieutenant. The rest were killed or wounded on the beach. And they called a roll. There was 19 riflemen left out of a company of 120. Too many men paid the price, and too many men will never come home. 
And I thank the mayor and the city of Toronto and the people of the city of Toronto for this, pro this proclamation. I will remember to pay tribute to the young man that can never come home. Thank you very much. My father joined the army on June 6, 1940 with the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada. He stormed the beaches of Normandy in D-Day invasion on June 6, 1944. The gear that each soldier carried as they made their way across the beach in hip deep water weighed as much as 100 pounds. A rifle slung over his shoulder, magazines of ammunition for the Bren guns, grenades, a water canteen and a haversack on his back. His orders were to make your way up the beach, make it to the wall, and not to stop on the beach to help anyone. If you stop, you would surely be the next casualty. My father and a feather so fellow soldier set up a Bren gun on a high sand dune and gave covering fire to the rest of the platoon as they made their way along the back wall. When the roll was called that night, only 19 out of approximately 130 soldiers in B Company answered. It was the longest day and the luckiest day of his life. Dad's brother, Corporal George Hadley, was also in Baker Company. He was two boats to the right, suffered extreme heavy fire. His boat was blown up, turned sideways into the shore, but he jumped into six feet of water and managed to swim. He was lucky that day. A month later, he was killed on patrol in a night mission. He rests now in Benesomil, France. Dad and the rest of his company moved out toward Caen on July 9, 1944. The next day he was severely injured as pieces of shrapnel when a bomb exploded. He made his way to the regimental aid post, dodging bullets along the way, but passed out from his wounds. When he came to, he was on a stretcher being evacuated to England, the second luckiest day of his life. Dad was sent home in May 1945 aboard the Ile de France. He soon met my mother, Dorothy Wright, and they were married on August 17, 1945. My parents raised me and my five siblings in a house in East York and now have ten grandchildren. After losing our mother two years ago, Dad remains in the same home with the assistance of his family and services from the Department of Veterans Affairs. We celebrated Dad's 90th birthday in January of this year. Dad, thank you so much for your bravery in the service of our country, for sharing your experience with us and giving us a good life. You are my hero above all. We are so proud of you and love you very much. I would like to thank all our veterans and soldiers here today for their bravery and to all of you for coming and sharing this special day with us. Thank you.